I know, I know I said I'd never build this kit, but you know what? Let's get started. Hey guys, welcome back to part number one of something I didn't think would be happening, and that's a, not only a new build series, but building the F22 Raptor, the I Love Kit or Hobby Boss um, 48 scale version. Now, I, you're thinking, what is going on? You, you had a review last week, you said you were going to build it, you didn't like the kit, so why are you back doing it? And a um, few reasons. So, I spent a lot of time looking online at pictures and these things aren't quite as clean and and um, cookie cutter as I thought they were. I thought it was just a couple, boring couple of you know, what light gold gray, dark gold gray splodges, and that's pretty much it. But I'm gonna put some pictures up right now I found online, and this really kind of um, piqued my interest. And as you can see in these pictures, it is a patchwork on there of different colors and different fading and weathering and stuff on there. It is not as squeaky clean as you as I. Well, me personally assumed it was. So I love a challenge. I like painting and I'd never done one of these um, latest generation fighters before at all. Or um, that, that, certainly not the F-22 and not especially with the paintwork. So it's going to be a nice challenge to try to get that sheen, um, metallic sheen paintwork. And I'm going to go all out and because um, this thing's not going to take very long to put together. And um, on the paintwork here, post shading and get that effect you can see in those photographs. Uh, which I think would be pretty cool. So that's the first thing. The second thing is um, the kit is pretty standard, but it's Hobby Boss and it should go together pretty well. And like I mentioned, I haven't built one before. And um, the third reason is a very popular kit. A lot of people have been asking questions about it. A lot of people are interested to see how it goes together. So I thought, why not? Um, like, I, like I did a year, a year or two ago with the Meng um, FA-18 and the uh, mini base SU-33, I'll be a leader rather than a follower and I'll be the first one to throw up a build thread on this one. So. This is going to be part number one. It's not going to be a long drawn out process. I know some of my other build series have gone on for like 10, 15 parts, 30 minutes each. That's not a lot in this kit. So I could probably put this together in a weekend to be honest with you and then just painting and weathering. So it mentions on here 380 pieces. Bullshit. It's not 380 pieces. I counted the instructions, um, sorry, parts. I count, you know, I've got the instructions out. I thought, oh, well, you know what, let's just take a peek here. God, everything's falling over now. Um, so, I went through the instructions, and a spoiler alert, there's only 16 steps, so there's not much going on in there, and that includes the weapons. So, if I take the weapon, so I counted every single part in the instructions, other than weapons and the attachment points for the weapons and stuff, um, like the pylon kind of stuff, and there's 134 parts. Now, even with the weapons, there's not 150 weapon parts in here, surely. So I wonder if they're being cheeky and adding the um, the decals as a part, like each decal is a part number or something, because there's no way there's 380. So like I said, 134 parts to get this thing put together. Um, not So the 380 thing is kind of BS. I wouldn't, yeah, it's kind of sneaky a little bit here. It's like when you buy the armor kits and it says it has thousands of pieces, when you find out that it's like 50 pieces to build a tank and then it's like a thousand pieces for the track. Um, yeah, there's not a lot in here. So I'm not going to go through the instructions kind of step by step because... We, I did that review last week, so check out my review, you can see all the plastic. Um, what I will do now is though, I went outside, took some still photographs of the fuselage. Yeah, the fuselage here, because on the camera, it's kind of hard to see the, um, the surface detail, especially with my lights and stuff. Um, maybe in this light, you can see it a little bit better here. Um, again, I'll put some put the photographs up. It's definitely not as bad as Hasegawa. It's probably maybe a little too heavy but I don't think it's quite enough to warrant sanding or anything. I think it's going to be okay. So, yeah, again, so it's not a lot in this one, really. It's The cockpit's really boring. It's um, glass cockpits. There's not much going on at switches and stuff. There's no point going any aftermarket, any Quinta Studios, anything like that, because all it is is a couple of screens, touch screens and a stick, basically. So you're wasting your money. So one thing you do need is a seat. Um, the seat's pretty poor in this. And despite this huge price tag, which we talked about before in the review, there are no seat belts like photo etch or even decals seat belt harnesses. So that's pretty poorly done. So I'm going to get the Wolfpack seat I've ordered already and it should be here in a few days. Um, I don't need the seat to the very end anyway, so I can carry on building without that. So I've got the Wolfpack for the Academy kit, the F22 seat, um, the Aces 2 seat, but um, it should fit this one, I'm sure. If not, you just sand the bottom down or make it fit. It won't be an issue for a seat. Um, has more than harnesses and all the rest of that kind of jazz, so it should be fine. So. 
that is what we got planned here. It's going to be, I'm actually pretty excited about this one. I've, I've gone ahead and ordered all the paints. Now, I mentioned this in my bench update, some of the recent videos. Very interesting, the paint work on this one. We'll talk about when we get to the paint video, but they're basically mixing light and dark, light and dark gold gray with um, certain metallics, super metallics to get that kind of sheen. So I've done a few little samples here with some kind of, I don't have exact colors. Um, I've ordered them all, all the colors on the here. I've ordered to make sure, so we do a nice little test bed here and test their colors. My hobby boss are normally completely out with the colors and terrible, but from doing a few samples here, they're not that far out, these two. And in the light, you can see the sheen on there. Um, and now this wasn't with Super Metallics, this was with Tamiya um, equivalents. But I think it's gonna look pretty cool with the sheen. Um, in the light, you can see it, these two right here. So we're gonna get plate, do, we basically get this thing thrown together um, and then really go to town playing with these paints and see what colors we can get. And um, the final thing is that cockpit, um, the, the canopy, should I say. It's clear glass. Now it's quite evident it's um, an orangey gold color in real life. So I need to find some something very small pigment, the gold paint and um, the clear orange and do some kind of mix with that. And we'll, we'll talk about it when time comes and we'll figure out some kind of solution for that as well. Um, or we'll probably spray the inside and tint the canopy um, quite possibly. So that's what we've got going on. Um, I did want to put a figure in this pilot figure and Redoc have a really nice 48 scale um, figure with like laser helmet and stuff. But with shipping, it's like $25. And I just can't justify $25 for a 48 scale pilot figure. You won't see. Um, so we're just going to go with the resin seat and um, be pilotless on the ground. So, yeah, that is my introduction. I know, never said, I said literally a week ago, I wasn't never going to build this. I'd probably never do the kit. And here I am sat here doing a video with part number one. So, so again, it's not going to be drawn out. I'm not going to show you gluing together every single piece of plastic. I think we know how to do that by now. I'm just going to go through, really, you know, mostly deal with the paintwork and stuff and stuff that really people are interested in and seeing how well this thing goes together. So that being said, let me switch the camera and um, let's throw this cockpit together, which should take like no time at all. And then we can wrap this video up and come back next time with um, another part. Um, one thing I should note is there'll be no set schedule on this one, like with the SG-33. I'm not going to do it every Friday. Um, I have my usual build videos going. So as and when, I'll post out the videos. And again, this should be a pretty short project, like two or three weeks. This, there's not much to this. It's just the paintwork. Um, so yeah, so this time we will switch the camera and let's go ahead and get started with the, with the cockpit up. All right, so literally a week ago, I went through the whole thing, did a review. So you guys hopefully seen that. If not, you can go back and see it in detail. So we're just gonna flick through this real quick um, for the purpose of this video. And um, if I go through here, there's not much at all. To get this thing together, pretty much eight steps. And um, like I said, I pretty much easily do it on a weekend to get this thing thrown together, eight steps. And then you know, then you're into like the detail parts of the you know, like the angle attack sensors and the, the gear doors and the weapons and that kind of stuff um, for the rest of it, which is not much at all. And then 16, you're done. So not much here at all, and a pretty straightforward kit. So let's look at cockpits up. So what you're going to do is you're going to take the upper fuselage, which is this guy right here, and basically you're going to stick the tub into the bottom um, before you sandwich the two. Well, it's going to be three parts. There's a front section and there's a back section. Um, so three parts that make it up. Now, down here, you've got like the, um, I guess what the exhausts are back here. You've got two pieces and um, just fit them in. And then while you've got the paint burnt iron, we've got the paint in the gun, you must well go step forward and do, um, I noticed here somewhere. Where are we at? Here, section six, you're doing the the the, um, the lower side, which is exactly the same. So you must do both at the same time. Now the thing is, what I've done is I've cut them off the sprue already. These guys, and um, it's pretty straightforward. They just basically I, I put sharpies on which one's which is the top tip. So six and twelve go together. So six and twelve, and basically they just fit together like so, and they just basically slot into the back like that. Now. I think like any exhaust nozzle, you don't need to put these on right now. I think we do it at the very end once we get the build. So we'll test that when we get to it, but for now I'm not gonna put these on. Um, and I need to figure out the painting too. I'm assuming they're all burnt iron, all round it, but not, not just the bottom, but I'll figure that out when we get to it as well. But again, I don't think you need to worry about adding these because you should have no problem doing it. Um, like that, see at the very end, just slot these guys in. So again, number them to you know just switch because otherwise you have a whole world of hurt if you get all these things confused probably. Um, these guys right there. Um, cockpit up. 
super easy. Now the seat, we would obviously go into Wolfpack one, which haven't arrived yet, so we'll do it later on. Um, so ignore all that part. So all we basically got is two parts, a stick and like the, um, I think this is part, hold the canopy like to raise it up and down, like the actuator back here um, in the cockpit tub, and you got one instrument panel, obviously. And that is it. So bringing them in, you literally have four parts, and they're all going to be black. And um, I'm probably going to go Mr. Soaps a 1500 black, because I just love the way that looks. Um, you don't want to do like a pure flat black or um, anything, because or maybe rubber black might be a good good way to, to go, but. Pretty simple, not really much to talk about. I'll glue a stick in this guy in, um, keep this separate so we can have the decals, um, paint it all black, add the decals, um, come back, and um, then ready to kind of basically just slots in the bottom here, like so. And that is it, not too much. So let me go ahead and get these painted up and decaled, and I'll be right back. All right, back, and we've got the top copic tub done. No problem at all. Um, firstly, excuse my fingers in, in this part. I building my A10, doing my ordnance right now, and managed to get um, some olive drab all over my fingers and spilled everywhere, and it's, I've been trying to scrub it off, so we're modelers, so we get our hands dirty, right? So, here we go. That's how we're looking, and we're quite happy with this, although it's really bright colours down the switches there, so this decal on the side you have to cut off, um, to get around a control stick, so you probably want to put that first and then put a control stick in. Um, put them down and use plenty of micro... So, just to kind of, plenty of it, just kind of get it get down, suck it, sucks it all down and covers, you know, and um, covers really well. Um, so that's that part done in. Um, the white switches around the inch, around the um, screens, used my usual Posca pen. Posca, and this is a 0.7 mil. This is a PC1MR. Make sure you get this one because it has a very small one. Yep, small um, tip. The other one has a very wide like, felt tip, kind of sharpy look. So you want this size, all different colors, give it a really good shake. And it's almost like a dry brushing thing with these in instrument panels. Just lightly, lightly kind of run it across and it picks out the switches. Like so, which is kind of bright. Um, maybe not totally accurate, but hey, but a black cockpit, it stands out. And I think I like this look. So I did that. And the other thing, so I obviously put decals all down first. Um, all the screens and stuff, no problem. And once they bedded down, again, using the micro sole and dried and everything, and uh, I went back with my usual Mod Podge uh, Super Gloss Brilliant Extreme. Now, this stuff is um, PVA glue, it dries, as the label says, crystal glass clear. So, for any dials or screens and stuff, with a, using a toothpick, just dab it in the, in the, pack, in the um, jar there and just dip it on your screens. And um, as it dries, it dries like glass. Now, I'm not sure how well you can see it in that light, but it's, I just put this on like half an hour ago, so it's still drying. But it'll give you that kind of glassy kind of look and give you a little bit extra dimension to the cockpit. Um, other than that, you can see a little bit of dry brushing just to kind of break up the black. So the black was the usual um, Mr. Surface of 1500, just straight down. It's a primer, but it has this lovely finish. Um, so I dry brushed it with um, one of my favorite dry brushing stuff right now is Sisdell's Dry Necron Compound. So any game, work, any games workshop store, um, you can find this stuff. They have different colors, and basically, you see there, it's like a really thick kind of like, I don't know, like jelly paste kind of thing. And it's just it wipe off all the excess of the brush, and it's just dry brushing, basically um, dry brushing paint. And um, you can see that I like the shade on this one. So this guy's done. Um, obviously not the seat, but I've glued this guy in. Obviously did the instrument panel separately with all decals and stuff and just glued it in right now. Um, and there we are. So I just did a quick fit and it's actually a beautiful fit. So here we've got like a line, um, just pushed against there. And if you push it up through, you can see it fits absolutely perfect. And this guy will just fit flush against the front there. And there is your copy tub. So I obviously painted the surround on this first too before we insert it. Um, but yeah, very happy with that. So looking really cool. Getting the switches maybe a little bit too bright, um, maybe necessarily, but I think it picks it out and makes the cockpit look a little bit more interesting. Um, so the rest of this tub will basically just be comprised of that seat once we get it from Wolfpack. Um, but yeah, I'm going to wrap this video up here. I think that's a good stopping point. Um, really happy with that cockpit tub and how it's kind of fitting and stuff. And definitely some more color and um, looking a lot bit but nice than I was expecting. I thought it would be a little bit more muted, so I'm really happy with that one. So I'm gonna come back. Um, I'm just go. Oh, I'm gonna say next week, but I'm gonna carry on working on this one, um, filming, getting this thing put together, and um, once I've got the next 
10-15 minutes worth of video, I'll come back and post my second part, which will probably be within a week. So if you haven't already done so, please consider subscribing so you can catch all my latest videos and stuff. I've got tons of content, tons of mostly aircraft stuff, um, but all kinds of modeling related stuff. And um, as always, thank you for watching, appreciate it, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.